um, if a question is asked in Dutch, um, just pause, it will get translated into English, and then the, uh, the same for the response as well. Um, we will begin with questions from the floor, and we'll go to Gail from Sky Sports. Thank you. Serena, we know that you are one to always be calm, composed, but inside your heart must have been going crackers, especially when your team went 2-0 down. How did you kind of see through the kind of, you know, first 45 and manage to pull that performance together in the second half? Yeah, well, I was actually pretty calm. I was very disappointed they scored the second goal because I thought we didn't play bad. Um, I think the first time they came on our half of the pitch was in the 11 minutes and they scored straight away. I think that was a good goal. I think the second goal we were a little bit unlucky. That was an unnecessary goal. Um, but still, I thought we didn't we didn't play bad. Um, but we definitely needed some more, and especially when you're 2-0 down. And we truly believed that we could turn around. I thought if we score one goal, and the players truly believed that too in the dressing room at halftime, we score one goal, then, then they're going to be shaky again because we did have some very good press moments on them and played well. I think they played well too. But, um, yeah, overall, we never, we never lost trust. Word on your goalkeeper because... She's been phenomenal for you since you've taken over this job. And she said that she felt that she let her team down today and she was obviously very upset. Have you spoken to her? Is she okay in there? Yeah, well, I spoke to her very shortly and I don't want her to talk like that because you win as a team, you lose as a team. Everyone makes mistakes and you know, and you know when something in the back happens, then it's very quickly a goal. Uh, and but when something happens up front and you make a mistake, then no one will see it because then you either score a goal or you don't score a goal. So that is part of the game. So of course she didn't let the team down. Everyone does her best and gives everything. And I think you only let your team down when you don't put any effort in the game. And we never don't put effort in the game. And just finally for me, a word on Lauren James, because those two assists were sublime. Mm -hmm. And to do it at that point in the game when you really needed her, how good was she in that second half for you? Yeah, I think she stepped to... I think everyone stepped up. Uh, we needed... Yeah, we needed... Well, we needed to step up as a team and uh, we really uh, set that at halftime too. And that's what she did, but I think everyone did that and that brought energy in the team. And also the subs who came in brought extra energy and that's exactly what we needed. So the team showed up again as individuals and as a whole team, and that, that makes us strong. Thanks, Gail. We'll go to Emma in the middle. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Serena. Hi. Um, obviously, we've, we've discussed a few, a few of the, the, the problems or the issues maybe in results um, in, in the Women's Nations League so far. It felt like it was kind of the, maybe the same problems, the same issues again in this game. Is this perhaps coming a bit more of a concern for you now? The, the performances over the last couple of months, it seems to not, not just be a one-off, it's, it's starting to become a little bit more regular now. No, I don't think this, I think this was a totally different game. Um, against a very good opponent, and um, I think their first goal was a, was just a great counter attack. Um, and, and for example, the, the, the Belgium game, we lost the ball at moments we absolutely didn't didn't expect to lose the ball. I think we had very many less moments like that. So I think we played a lot better than we did in the other games, and we uh, we didn't we have we had a less a lot less moments. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Emma. Just go behind you, to Catherine. Thanks. Hi, Serena. Um, to have it in your own hands, you, you had to obviously win by two goals. And the reaction of the players at full time, it almost looked as if they'd lost the game. It, it, mm -hmm. you know, they, it was a fantastic comeback to, to win 3-2 after being soon down at half time. But they almost looked defeated at the end. Is that kind of what you'd said to them, kind of drilled into them? You know, we need to win by two goals to, to make sure we're mm. in control. No, I don't have to drill in them. The team knows exactly what we need to do. And I think we were very, very close to a 4-2. And I think that was a disappointment. I had... I had a little bit too. I was happy that we turned around the game and that we got the 3-2, but we were so close to the 4-2 and that would have totally changed our situation. So um, so that was a disappointment. And at the other hand, I'm I'm really proud of the team, how we, how we stepped up, how we showed resilience and how we turned around the game. 
Thanks, Captain. We'll go to Dan in the middle. Hi, Serena. Um, obviously, you ended that game with real momentum. How do you kind of bottle that and take that into Scotland? You know that you start really, really brightly against Scotland on Tuesday. Yeah, well, you know, it's um, first now some players are still training. Um, we do some recovery, um, and then we uh, yeah, then we get prepared for Tuesday, and we want to have the team that how we were on the pitch the second half. And I also think the first 10 minutes of the first half before we concede, I think we did really well. That's what you want on the pitch. And uh, first of all, you need to win the game. And if possible, you want to score as much goals as possible. And um, and then, then we'll see what happens. That's what we can control. We can't control what the Netherlands does against Belgium. Uh, but we can give our everything to, to get a good win and to see what happens after that. I think... As much as you guys didn't lose trust in yourself, the fans didn't either. I feel like there were moments that even I, I think I was almost stood up on the chair at one point because we didn't lose any hope. But there were so many great moments during the game and during the year as well. So to wrap it up, what's been your favourite moment of the year so far with the team? The favourite moment? Did the tonight? Year. Not tonight, of the year. Oh, I can't say one favourite moment because we had so many moments. And I think the year so far has, uh, yeah, we have we have experienced so many things. Finalissima, the World Cup, and now the Nations League, where we had some downs, but I think today brought some very positive things and, and showed who we are as a team too. I think that's really great. So that's one of the special moments, I think, too. But um, no, I, I wouldn't say just one moment. Thanks very much. We'll go to Tom from the Telegraph. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, Serena. Uh, so you might now have to win by at least four goals in, in Scotland. Are you hopeful that you can do that? Do you think the team can pull that off on Tuesday? Well, uh, how we approach is first that we have to win that game. Um, and that's what we're going to do. And of course, uh, we're going to push and try to, to uh, put them fully under pressure to score as many goals as possible. But we have to be aware that we don't want to concede any two. And um, yeah, we need to, to win at least with, with with four more than, than what the Netherlands is going to do if they win. But, uh, of course, we're going to go forward, straight forward Tuesday. Can I also ask you a little bit about what, what you said at half-time? Because clearly a, a remarkable comeback. So what were your words at, at the half-time break? Uh, at half-time, we first um, we said that this game is absolutely not over and that um, if we score a goal, that they were going to be shaky because they were, well, they... They were struggling with their defense, with how we played uh, in attack. Uh, we also did some some a tactical thing in defense, which we had to do better. That was in our plan, and we um, we needed to do that better. Um, and we said we have to step up. We need more. Everyone needs to step up now and and bring some extras. And I think that's what we all saw. The Zenders did that too. I think at the end of the game, you could really tell that players gave everything because they were really tired. I could just ask one more. Um, Beth Mead coming on. What did you make of her return? I know she didn't score, but clearly made an impact in, yeah, in the comeback. Yeah, she had a very good impact. Um, I think it's really impressive coming back from an injury, building with Arsenal, and then coming in in an international game at this level, at this environment, 70,000 people. Yeah, I'm very proud of her. Just go to Tom in front of you. Thank you. Hi, um, can I ask about how you sort of readdressed the balance of the midfield in the second half? I think in the first half, the Netherlands played the ball around a lot in, in midfield. And sort yeah, of that was position. exactly the problem. Uh, what we said at halftime, we, 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 we didn't execute defensively well enough. And um, what the Netherlands tried to make a, um, an overload in midfield, and we have to solve that from the back, and sometimes we solve it from the front. And uh, the deeper we are on the pitch, we need to solve it from the front. And we didn't do that. And that's why they could go out at those moments. And we didn't want them to get out. So I think the second half, we did that a lot better because we were pressing them um, better or in organization. But also the intensity of our press in those moments was better. No, I had, it had to do... No, it had to do with... Yeah, I bet Mead helped too. But also, uh, Lauren James needed to do that better, too. And she did. Charlotte. Hi, Serena. Um, you changed personnel at halftime, but not formation. Did you ever think that you would change a formation earlier in the second half? No. Why? <laughs> uh, 
um, because I thought that the way we, the way our formation was, we could harm them, and um, and I thought we did. Also, the first half we had dangerous moments. We just um, didn't, yeah, didn't score, and we conceded. And you can really look at the results, but I think we played pretty well. And I thought we started really well the second half too, and we got pressure. So th that was not in my mind to change. Only when we had to force a goal, then we brought Rachel and Alessia up front. Uh, but that that time, the Netherlands already played with 4-3-3. They changed their formation. Do you ever have doubt in your mind? Did you find it easy to stick to your nerve? Of course, I'm a human being. Of course, I have also doubts in my mind. But that's why we prepare so much. and. We think, what are the options we have? And then you have to make decisions. And today, that was pretty hard, but we did. And I think uh, we did. Uh, the team did well. Thank you. Thanks, Charlotte. We can take a couple of questions in Dutch with our translator. Yes, we'll go to the back. Thank you. Hi, Serena. Gefeliciteerd. Um, in Nederland vragen ze zich een klein beetje af wat, ze, wat we dinsdag van Schotland kunnen verwachten. Er zit ook een beetje een gekke situatie met uh, nou ja, dat ze eventueel met jullie, of tenminste met team Great Britain naar de Olympische Spelen gaan. Hoe kijk jij daarnaar? Ja. Um, so we just, we just, oh. um, congratulations yeah. on your win. Thank you. Um, and we're just, um, we're just wondering. I don't speak uh, English. <laughs> and, uh, <it's laughs> yes. yes. Um, so uh, we're just wondering what's going to happen, what you're going to expect from Scotland. I answer in Dutch. Ja, yeah, dat yeah? is de bedoeling. Yeah. Oké. Okay. Um, ja, ik, ik kan me de vraag heel goed voorstellen. Maar als je naar de rivaliteit kijkt tussen Schotland en Engeland, die is enorm. En de Schotten gaan echt niks weggeven. Um, ze zijn vanavond gedegradeerd. Dus dat zal voor hun, ja, dat kan natuurlijk weer twee kanten op. Of ze gaan heel vrij uit voetballen en maakt het uit. Want het, res het resultaat maakt voor hun toch niks meer uit. Maar zij willen echt graag van Engeland winnen. Dat hebben we de eerste wedstrijd gezien toen we tegen ze speelden. Dus wij verwachten een sterk Schotland. Ja, yeah, so uh, I can I can I I'm not surprised by that question. Um, there's an enormous rivalry between Scotland and England, and um, Scotland's not going to give anything away. And they were they were downgraded today, so uh, that wasn't good. They were relegated. Relegated. <laughs> I'll help a little bit. We'll do it together. Hi, Sarina. Um, ik vroeg me nog af, uh, ik herinner me dat je in de, de Galgenwaard zei um, over, uh, volgens mij was het de 1-0, dat het hele stadion zag dat het buitenspel was. Dat we de VAR, dat, dat je ja, de dat VAR had ik niet moeten zeggen. <laughs> dat ging overal, uh, ja. Dat je de VAR een beetje miste. Um, had je dat gevoel nu ook een beetje, dat uh, jullie eigenlijk een, een hoekschop, hoekschop hadden verdiend en... Uh, dat Oranje uit de spelhervatting zeg maar scoorde of did did you feel that you that your team had deserved a, a, a corner kick? Ja. Yeah. Um, nee, ik daar heb ik geen tijd voor gehad. De wedstrijd ging zo snel heen en weer dat ik uh, dat moment uh, het was een achterbal. Ja, misschien dat ik was alweer door naar het volgende moment. Nee, ik vond um, ik heb vandaag niet zozeer de VAR gemist. N Okay. No, I didn't. I didn't wonder that uh, everything was going so quickly, so it wasn't something that I considered. Thank you. Well. Sure. Hi, Serena. Ook gefeliciteerd. Thank you. Um, wat is de rol van Wembley geweest vanavond? Uh, want uh, Andries uh, Jonker zei net uh, dat met name de onervaren speelsters in de tweede helft, nou ja, ook door de heksketel die ontstond, het misschien een beetje moeilijk hebben gehad en dat dat misschien de omkerende wedstrijd heeft veroorzaakt. Konden jouw speelsters daar? Beter mee omgaan, denk je, ook door de eerdere ervaring. So, congratulations from me also. Um, what do you think the role was of Wembley in this in this game? It's possible that some of the less experienced Dutch players were a bit intimidated by playing at Wembley, and did your players have a problem with that as well? Nou, ik denk allereerst dat wij uh, veel meer druk nog gingen zetten, dat wij tempo onhoog. Uh, brachten in, in de wedstrijd en dat dat uh, en Nederland wel behoorlijk onder druk zette. Nederland moest inderdaad wisselen, een paar ervaren spelers. Um, ik, en ik denk dat dat uh, daar ook mee te maken heeft en dat het voor ons zeker iets extra's is om hier een Wembley te spelen. Maar ik denk ook dat het met ons spel te maken had. So, so yes, so um, it, it was difficult for the Netherlands and um, first we could put more pressure on them and we put we, we put them on under extra pressure um, and I definitely think it was easier for us to have the, 
the game at Wembley. Take a final question, thank you. Uh, hi, Serena, gefeliciteerd. Hi. Um, ja, er werd net al gevraagd naar een hoogtepunt van het jaar. Ik kan me voorstellen dat dat lastig is. Um, maar deze avond, um, met twee ploegen uh, nee, waar jij zo'n grote rol in hebt gespeeld, um, uh, op Wembley. Um, kun je vertellen wat dat voor jou heeft betekend? Yeah. Is dat niet toch ook in ieder geval een hoogtepunt? Mm -hmm. So, also congratulations from me. Um, this must have been a highlight this, this evening with this team in Wembley. Ja, yeah, um, zeker. Zeker. On Ongelooflijk hoogtepunt. Je, net zoals veel dingen in mijn carrière als coach had ik niet verwacht door de groei van het vrouwenvoetbal, maar dat ik hier mag staan met Engeland en dan tegen me eigen land spelen. Ook tegen Andries, die ik heel goed ken. Uh, nou, met 71.000 mensen op de tribune, dat is wel heel erg bijzonder. En daarnaast, de wedstrijd was van zo'n hoog niveau, denk ik. Uh, Nederland wil voetballen, wil vooruit. Uh, goed aan de bal, natuurlijk hele goede spelers. En dat heeft Engeland ook. Ik denk dat het uh, een hele bijzondere avond was in het vrouwenvoetbal en reclame voor het vrouwenvoetbal. Um, yes, um, so Certainly, it was an enormous highlight. I hadn't expected to be standing here in Wembley and to have 71,000 people watching. And it's such a high level of football and so such good playing by the teams. Thanks ever so much, everyone. We'll see some of you in Glasgow. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>